Yesterday was another troubling day for Halo fans, who for the past few years have been forced to watch arguably the strongest franchise in all of gaming dwindle away into a shadow of its former self. Now, if you think I'm hating on you because you're a Halo player, listen, man, I used to live and breathe Halo. I played all the games. I read the books. I was deeply involved in the lore. And believe me, anything that involved Halo, I was hyped for. But really, over the past decade, things, man, they have gone downhill. Now, starting with the news, though, Joseph Stanton left Microsoft. Now, this news actually broke Friday, April the 7th, per IGN article via confirmation from Microsoft. And a Microsoft spokesperson actually stated that we're grateful for Joseph's contributions to the Halo franchise and Xbox as a whole. We wish him all the best in his new adventure. Now, this announcement was also confirmed by Joseph Stan himself via his Twitter. Hey, folks, I'm indeed leaving Microsoft. I have more info to share soon, but for now, I'd just like to thank all my Xbox colleagues for all their understanding and support as I embark on a new adventure. Now, some of you may be wondering, who the hell is Joseph Stan? Well, Joseph is one of the OG developers for Halo. He was the director of cinematics and mission dialogue for the first three Halo games. He also wrote the Halo novel Contact Harvest, which was a number three New York Times bestseller. My man goes way back. So much so that Stan actually began the groundwork for Destiny. Actually, the original story of Destiny was written by Stan. And just over a year prior to the game's launch in July of 2013, it was scrapped by the higher ups and completely rewritten. Now, the original story of Destiny is still shrouded in a mystery, but we know it would have featured alternate versions of characters that Destiny players are already familiar with. Crow, Cyrus, and even Rasputin. All these characters have made appearances in Destiny at different points in the story than originally intended, which is why if you played Destiny 1, you know its greatest weakness was the story. And honestly, guys, it takes more than a year to drastically change a game with zero repercussions. Now, post rewrite, Bungie confirmed Stan had left the company in September of 2013, and Stan then returned to Microsoft, the former publisher and partner of Bungie Studios, as a creative director, where he wrote another Halo novel and worked as the lead writer for games like ReCore and Crackdown 3. Now, Sam was working in the Xbox publishing division while Halo came calling again. 343 was struggling to push out Halo Infinite, which needed to be delayed for a 2021 release. Now, Xbox announced the delay August the 11th, 2020. And then right after that, Joseph Stan was announced campaign project lead on August the 26th for Halo Infinite. Now, for those of you who remember, Destiny 2 Beyond Light became the Xbox launch title for the 2020 holiday season because of this delay. Honestly, if this delay didn't happen, it would have just been Halo Infinite. But considering it became the launch title for the new Xbox, we were all under the assumption that Bungie was getting back in bed with Microsoft. However, this was actually over a year before Sony was the one to acquire Bungie. Now, leading up to the 2021 launch, cracks began to show in Halo Infinite's development. In August, players would be informed Couch Co-op was canceled. A promise 343 made before Halo Infinite was even announced. And Forge Mode wouldn't even launch with the game at release. As you can imagine, the launch of Halo Infinite was lackluster to say the least. Campaign was honestly mediocre, guys. And the in-game visual customization options were locked behind paywalls and staples of the franchise, like Griffball and Infection, were not even available as game modes in multiplayer. Infinite received lots of attention at launch, but only a few months later, the player count was abysmally low. And now, Steam Charts places the current player count at the time of writing at just above 6,000 players. That's awful. Now, granted, this is not representative of the entire player population, as this is just Steam, but it is a snapshot compared to the 256,619 max player count that it had at launch. And believe me, guys, we were playing PvP day and night. But even the multiplayer, I started to see the cracks. Now, fast forward months later, Microsoft announced in January 2023 that it was laying off 10,000 employees by March the 31st. Now, this was across the entire company, not just 343. One former 343 developer tweeted that the layoffs at 343 shouldn't have happened and that Halo Infinite should be in a better state. And that the reason for both of those things is in common leadership up top during Halo Infinite development, causing massive stress on those working hard to make Halo the best that it could be. Now, it's unclear whether the leadership was problematic because of the higher ups at Microsoft or the directors at 343, but either way, based on the details from Halo developers, the leadership is a major reason why Halo Infinite failed. Halo Infinite saw many long-time developers and creative leads depart during its production. So it comes as little surprise, given the above tweet, that Joseph Stan was brought in as sort of a last-ditch effort to salvage Halo Infinite and get it cohesive enough for launch day. Now, this is ironic considering his past, and you know what I mean. Stan was responsible for cleaning up Microsoft's mess with only one year till prime time. Now, after the launch of Halo Infinite, Joseph Stan eventually returned to his job at Xbox, publishing in January of this year, and this may have been the plan from the start. His position at 343 was most likely an emergency until Halo was shipped out. Who knows why he's been at 343 for the last few years. Maybe it was to keep the game stable post-launch, but whatever the case, it's this Xbox 
position that Stan is leaving and moving on to work for a different company. Now, we don't know if Stan is one of the many unfortunate Microsoft employees that were laid off or if he's leaving because a new opportunity has arisen for him. His tweet would suggest the latter, as he said, who have more info to share soon. Cross, what do you think? Guys, I personally don't believe Joe Stan leaving will have a major impact on the Halo franchise and its current state. The little work he did perform at 343 was during one of 343's lowest points in the history of the franchise, and it's unforeseeable if he would have had any hand in the future releases of Halo. I do hope wherever he ends up, he does find success. As for the state of Halo and 343, as far as we know, they still have the reins to the Halo franchise. However, considering it took just over six years to launch Halo Infinite, the hopes of a new Halo game coming anytime soon are very bleak. There's so much history we could dive into to further explain why Halo Infinite failed, which is much too large for the scope of this video. But after diving into the convoluted mess created by 343, the Microsoft acquisition of Bethesda and possibly soon Activision makes so much sense. Microsoft needs hard-hitting franchise titles, games that make people want to choose Xbox. Halo used to be Microsoft's golden goose, but now they've had to rely on independent studios like Bungie and a wide assortment of offerings on Game Passes to sell their consoles to players. Meanwhile, PlayStation has been pushing out exclusives like God of War and acquiring studios like Bungie with a whole other lineup of exclusives coming. I do imagine Starfield will be Microsoft's next big shot at ruling players back in, and it will be an Xbox PC exclusive, and it's planned to launch September 6th of this year. As for my Halo players, who by the way, I love dearly, Halo will always hold a place in my heart. From my childhood, throughout my years of college, dude, I still remember getting a summer job, and the first thing I went to go buy was an Xbox and Halo Reach. I played all the campaigns constantly. I lived inside the multiplayer. There was something that Halo possessed years ago, which kept us coming back over and over. I really don't know what it was, but somewhere along the way, guys, it lost its magic. And to be quite frank with you, this is not an issue of Halo Infinite. This began as early as Halo 4. There's a reason why Bungie stepped away after Halo Reach. To me, Reach was the final send-off, with Halo 3 being the final ending to Master Chief himself. And everything from Halo 4 to 5 to Infinite to the show that the directors themselves stated they didn't want to draw inspiration from the games when directing Halo? What? I completely agree with the statement there from 343's developer. The leadership here, something went wrong. Imagine The Last of Us, which by the way, has had great success in its HBO series. Imagine if that show came out completely different from the game. Sure, we had some differences here and there, but the inspiration was clearly from the game, especially in the earlier episodes. This seems like a common sense approach, but to be quite honest with you guys, everything that surrounded Halo for the past decade has been anything but. So guys, let me know in the comments below what you think. For my Infinite players, they're like, man, this sucks. Our game is going to poop. Hey, listen, currently right now, Destiny 2 has an amazing sell. And even though our narrative is questionable at times, most notably Lightfall's campaign, Destiny 2 has been hitting its highest record numbers since it went free to play. And the quality of life improvements have been fantastic. It's truly becoming an MMO. Well, fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right. Oh.